Hello, I'm Yashirullah. Before we go into this lesson, Kal Halal Yahawa, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Kakadash. I give double honor to the apostles and prophets and elders of GMS Covenant and Oscar Mill Stone for the proof of the 100% truth that I've been currently edified under. Ah, uh, no gap. So, this, this lesson is concerning Gentiles because um, a few days ago, somebody who is dear to me, um, begin to stumble because they don't study and um and are not just making acquisitions they really do study and saying that all people could be saved the all people going to receive the everlasting salvation and um god can save everybody and yada 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 blah blah blah, blah. so i don't know and this is somebody who can I help me come into the truth now? But I don't really go in the scriptures and study to show us her proof, right? This, this is the importance of studying, right? So I'm going to start the lesson. And yeah, I hope this is edifying to y'all so y'all can get an understanding of what the Gentiles is, is, is speaking about. So I'm coming for this. I don't know how to I don't know how to do the screen thing. <laughs> I read not to do the screen thing, so I go in and switch up. Let me, let me get the <coughs> yeah, let me get this one first. Second granted. And this is the importance of studying because when you go into second Timothy chapter chapter two and verse fifteen, it says study to show yourself up right on Unto the Most High, right? A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that is very that is, it is important because when you study now, you will not be leaning on your own understanding because especially if you have elders, you're dealing having elders or having a guide, it's much more easier to study appropriately or properly without being lost. That's the things that you would want to know, and you would either go into the history to get them, or, you're, or, you're, or if it's too tough at the point in time, you ask for a, a, a little breakdown, a little understanding. So this is the importance of, of, of doing it, doing, um, studying the correct way, right? <clears throat> and when you go into Second Timothy again, we we'll just press... I don't know. I'm just scroll to the side. And I go into chapter verse 16 and 17. Chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17 it says, All scriptures are given by the inspiration of the Most High, and it's profitable for doctrines, for reproofs, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness, that a man of the Most High may be perfect and truly furnished unto all good works. Right? So with that being said, um, that gives a broad understanding regardless of the situation, right? And again, uh, I know that people out here who don't trust no human he is one of them so that's why i had to do this video because at least at least if you don't trust the human take down a precept and learn don't reject knowledge take down the precept and learn is what i'm trying to say oh, you know that's where i'm coming from take down the precept and learn and you go to go so when you go um when you go into I really think it's Let's see if you how but not according to knowledge, right? I'm trying to find that. Before I go on to the lesson. Okay. Right, right here. Romans chapter 10 and verse 2. They said, and this is him because when I really watch the situation, I give him precepts on things before. I give him major precepts about these things before. And if I, um, at least I have a good few, and 
I would you would expect them to you know really get into it and get some understanding. So um, this is really for you because when you watch the situation, this is what you're doing, right? You're giving your understanding and you're not taking it seriously. And the scriptures make it plain. Here it says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal for the Most High, but not according to knowledge. Understand? And there's, there's an issue right there. Because... With, when you when you're in studying, right? When you're in seek when you're in game proper guidance or whatnot, guess what you're gonna do now? And I'll go on. Oh gosh, I missed that. You know, I bear my little bit of trying to get this thing. Let's go into this. Because, just for the, just for the purpose. Right here. Right. That Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, Trust in your power with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Right? And it's sick in six it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So in order to really receive, there's an order in which you need to be received. You need to receive the truth. Of course, what I'm trying to say is the order in which you can receive the truth even more it grow, grow it grow yourself in the in the truth which is to do what to study get guidance from the elders and keep it going don't stop rehearse your writer's acts no i'm not saying that somebody can't get our insight and 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 you know learn but we know there's no self-taught israelites here so you can't ex you can't be you can't expect to really get proper understanding, right? When really and truly you don't study using your own words as proof because I was only willing to use the scriptures like I always have been. This is the purpose for studying. I said, don't be that it that it don't be um not to put it deceived that you have a spirit of discernment you know what I'm saying so let me go into this lesson this morning and um, again the lesson today is dealing with goy um or dealing with um gentiles because as he said um, the Jews and the Gentiles, which are the hidden nations, are all going to be grafted in, or going to be taken, and all, all going to receive the everlasting salvation. No, no, no. Let me not, let me not do that. That is a major incorrect statement right there. So let me go into this, this word again. Strong's age, 1471. Goy. Goy. I like the definition of that, which is the Gentiles, which which is see my press and go into, right? So, right, bam, bam. Okay, right, let's go. Outline of biblical usage, right? Masculine noun. Nation, comma, people. Point one, usually of non Hebrew people. Point two, of descendant of Abraham. Point three, of Israel. Right? So, even the scholars know that Gentiles is referring to both. Heathen nation and Israelites. Israelites that do what? That fall away. That discontinue from their heritage based on the disobedience. You know what I'm saying? So when they get that understanding, I mean, this alone just cuts the whole order. The reason why the Roman says, according to the flesh. 
flesh meaning um, bloodline, meaning genealogy, meaning blood or, or lineage. That's what it means, right? So, I mean, come on. Look at a good example. Who, who was Paul at the point in time? Wasn't Paul killing people, his own people? Unknowing that he was um, an Israelite? Wouldn't that refer to him as a Gentile until he, he found the truth? Until Yahawashai uh, met him and show him? Show him the order? You know what I see, see? And this is not hard to prove to be exact. And I'm going to do this lesson. I'm going to take my time and go through this lesson for you to kind of get some understanding. Right? So that we don't fall short. And we, as we receive the truth, we don't fall short and let these things be a, 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 a stumbling block on us. Right? That we may stumble and fall. Okay? So, let me go into this. Um, I want to go into, again, I start with the curses. Right? Because with this, we're dealing with scattered as well. We're dealing with... Um, we dealing with the, the nation, the, the reason for, for being scattered, right? Which are going to show and prove. So when you're going to, again, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 64, she just made it plain. It says, And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth, even unto the other. There thou shalt serve other gods. Ah! Which neither thou nor no neither now neither sorry so like neither thou nor that thy fathers have known even wood or stone. Oh, that worshiping or well, I mean that scattered it's basically different obedience. You think about it, yeah. How was scattering us and making us serve in other gods. For what purpose? For disobedience. Because when you go down into 15, and you could just make it plain as day, we'll go up into 15 and bypass it. It says, So the chapter 20 and verse 15, But it shall come to pass, if thou will, ne will thou will not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Ah, so we're dealing with a curse here now. And let me give you an example of us being of, of, of scattered to be exact. When you go to Ezekiel, most of you find it. Um, 11, 11 and 16, I believe. Eh? I'll go and shoot it one time. I didn't even play. And it says in 16, therefore, say. Say, thus say Jehovah, power, although I have cast them far among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I will be to them as a, lit as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. And as you go for it, it says, Therefore, say thus, um, say it, Yahweh power, I will gather, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give and I will give you the land of Israel. And we know. Perfect and proper understanding when you go into the scriptures, the um roughly paraphrasing, the Israelites right now are scattered. Scattered amongst the nations. Right? And I'm gonna get a, a, a nice little insight to that because when I go into Proverbs 44 and 11, it says, right? Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat and has scattered us among the heathens. Multiple times during our um, 
our stay on this land or all I say in this world, we have disobeyed Yahweh and gotten scattered. So how, why would we now put that top, that, that thought in our head that it's a difference now? Because if you believe, because I know many people who say that we disobey Yahweh and he turned his back against us, put his back away from us, and um, now he focusing on the Gentile. Bro, come on, bro. Like, this is the problem. When you do read, when you do study, when you do really go into the, the, the words, when you do, when you do um, read precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, when you do study the volume of the book, or study with the volume of the book, you would be in error. You would be in error. Because explain this to me, right? If that is so, so much of the case, and we know yeah, how I gave a, um, how a covenant with us, right? Listen to this part. I want to make sure and get this in all your heads. When you go into Psalms chapter 89, right? And 34. Just to just to give this a read, just to give you all an understanding. So then this would not make any sense then. This is this is no more in effect. This is null and void. Right? My covenant will will I not break, nor alter the things that, that, that is going out of my lips. He will not change anything that he uttered. So in other words, what the scriptures say this is incorrect, and what you say is correct. No, I really want to get the gist of this one time. Because as far as I know, when you go into Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, it says, For I for I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore ye, my son, ye, ye sons of Jacob, are not consumed. Are not consumed. And then when they go into First Peter, right? See that this is a covenant, a promise. Second Peter, sorry, chapter three and verse nine. The scripture has made it plain, straight to the point. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but the long suffering to our to usward, not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. And with that understanding, if you want to get tripped up by that, that statement, the only people who are given repentance is who? The children of Israel. I mean, I have read this multiple times and I could do it again, right? When I go into Acts chapter 5 and verse 30 and 31, this is the, this is the reason for this is the importance for what study to show us if I prove. It says. The Most High of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hung on a tree. Him had the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And I want you to tell me if that do agree with Galatians chapter 4 and 4, 4 and 5. 4 and 4 and 5. 4 and 45. It says, um, Galatians chapter 4 and, chapter 4 and verse 4. Right? But when the fullness of the time was come, the Most High sent forth his son made of a woman under the law. And that's, that's basically going on in understanding the Holy Spirit because even John was mentioned, referred to, made, be made under the woman. And we know John have a father. So we know Yahweh Shabbat have a father too. It's not talking about immaculate conception. Again, this is why we study. As we continue, to redeem them that were under the law. Again, to redeem them that were under the law. The scriptures made it plain. Because who's under the law? Very, very, very simple. I use it one precept alone to cut that whole situation. And I said, and then we'll continue with the lesson. I'm kind of trying to stray. I'll continue the Gentiles, right? So. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showed his words unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. 
Listen to this part. He had not dealt with any nation, and for his judgment they have not known them. Praise Yahweh. Now, when you go to the NLT and all, this was played as day, he not dealing with any other nation. Now, when you go to the NLT, it make it direct. He, he has revealed his words to Jacob, his decrees and his regulations to Israel. He had not done this for any other nation. They do not know his regulations. Praise Yahweh. Come on. Come on. So you see? So who is under the law in reality? Who is under the law? Only the children of Israel. You, you, can't, you can't stop that. You can't stop that. I, it is what it is. So now you continue and go back into the, um, the lesson now. Right? Because, again, you have to tell me that Psalms 89 and 31st, 34 don't exist then. That he changed, he altered his law to bring in the, um, the, 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 um, what do you call this? The, 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 the Gentiles, the heathen Gentiles. That is what he did. Not the Israelites. The heathen Gentiles is what he altered the law to bring. You all, you all in error if that is the case? If you all don't read, you all, you all be in error. How do you expect to know if you are not studying? That was saying so when you um so these covenants here I want to give a rough rough a rough rough example these covenants here when you go into Baruch and all let me go into the apocrypha a little bit these 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 covenants here right which lines up correctly with the um lines up are the same chapter twelve verse thirty four right that he um going to form with us well with form with us and I will bring them again into the land which I promise. With an oath unto their fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall and they shall be of um, lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished, right? And I and I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their um, their power, and they shall be my people, and I will not move away. I will, I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. And when they go into Jeremiah. Straight to the point again, 32 and verse 40, um, at 40. Behold, no, I saw like here, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them, and I will not turn away from them. I will not turn away from them. To do them good, but I will... Put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So who is he talking about? Everybody? All nations. Right? Now what are you trying to say? All are going to be grafted in. And all are going to receive the everlasting salvation. Now as far as I know, the ones who are going to receive the everlasting salvation will also be under the covenant. Well, also the ones that are under the covenant, are under the law. Because you are saved. We are the oldest people that really went into to, to, to slavery multiple, multiple times. So much so that they try to even erase that fact. You can look it up. That's what the internet is there for. Anyways, let me not rant anymore. Let me go into the, um, the lesson again. Who is here? Chapter 1 and verse 10. Again. It says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that, that in the place where it, it was said unto them, ye are not my people, right? There it shall also be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. And what is the reason why? What is the reason why um, Yahweh, in reality, what is the reason why Yahweh um, look away at, from us, or let's like say turn his back on us, and have, have to now come back and say, hey, you, you, you know what? All right, you got next chance. You understand what I'm saying? The man not breaking covenant. So he would only look away for a, a short moment. When you go to Jeremiah chapter 17, let me see if I have this correct on, on, on 3 and 4. Let me make sure. 
right correct is right and, and when i um let me read this it says three and four sorry matthew 17 verse three and four O my mountain in the field i will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin through all throughout all thy borders right and verse 4 to the point and thou even thy thy um thy even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that i gave thee and i will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger right which shall be which shall um burnt for which shall be burnt forever so he would look away for what purpose for what reason going back into i um hosea chapter one and verse two let you go into two i mean this 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 made it plain to be exact when you go into um hosea chapter one and verse two it says the beginning of the word of the of yahweh by hosea and yahweh spake to hosea go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and the children of whoredoms for the land had committed great whoredom departing from me and you get it and you get a good understanding in the nlt you hear what it said when the lord first began to speak um, began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, Go and marry a prostitute, so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against Yahweh and worshipping other gods. And we know when you go into... Um, Isaiah chapter 50, 54 and verse 8, it says, I mean, scriptures again, usually always make it plain. It says, in a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, said Jehovah thy Redeemer. So you see? So because of our disobedience, this is what takes place. Because even when you, when you, when you jump into um, the NLT, it, it says, in, in a burst of anger, I turned my face away for a little while. But, but with everlasting love, I, have, I will have compassion on you, say Yahweh the Redeemer. So when you go back into the who is there, chapter 1 and verse 10 to 11, reading it again, getting the understanding, we, we, we discontinued from our heritage. We, how to put it, we are falling away. When you go into um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, tell me if this do, tell me if this, this do apply. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Unto these dumb idols. So again, when I go back into um, Hosea chapter 1 and verses 10, it says, Yet the number of the children shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the day, in that, that in the day, in the place like here, where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. And, and 12 and 11, it's like it says, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together, and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great is the day of Jezreel. So this do song like he take he, he, um, he accept us back and for the ones who fall in our way too. This is something like that. This is something like that. So we have to remember this, right? When I go into Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 8 and 9. I, I believe we like we tend to forget these things. 
Remember, yeah, I'm, I'm not, Yahweh is not second to his promises, eh? right? And Yahweh, yeah, again, I am Yahweh, I change not there for ye sons of Jacob, Jacob um, are not consumed. And here it says in 8, but, but thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So he just going and disregard us and bringing everybody else after showing the world that we are in, were indeed his peculiar treasure, right? And still is, because in the scriptures it's made it plain, it still is, right? Okay, let me continue. You have a lot of questions to answer, sir. You have a lot of questions to answer. Because I just bring the precepts alone. Let me get into this. And nine. Thou whom I have taken from, from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men. Right? From the chief men thereof and said unto thee, Thou art my servant and I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. So y'all in error with the cast away thing. Number one, y'all in error concerning um, the covenants changing and what he could, he is going to graft people in. Number two, because come on, that was easy to remove. And three, y'all in error speaking about the Gentiles being only the heathen nations. No, it's not talking about the heathen nation Gentiles. Because when they go into Romans, again, Romans made it plain. Romans chapter 9 and verse 3 to 4. Straight to the point again. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Let me not miss that point. Who are Israelites, which meaning Israelites in the flesh, by blood, by their forefathers and forefathers and forefathers being um, Israelites. To whom put in the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. So you all can't really come and say anything concerning this again. Eh? Like if, if you all don't take down the precepts or, or, or try to learn, even read chapter um chapter by chapter if you all want to, verse by verse, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. However you choose to do it, just make sure you get the understanding because it's clear as day. That that not going to change. When it go up, it, there's nothing really to change it. You understand? <laughs> like, that is basically what it is. So let's talk about spiritual Israel. You're all in error. It's talking about the Israelites, the, the Gentiles, meaning the Israelites who fall away, which I have showed. Because when it go into Maccabees, I mean, Maccabees gives a perfect example. Maccabees, this is the reason why I go into Maccabees, because it gives a proper example. Let me go into the book of Maccabees. Um, I've not done this before. I would like to go. I would like to go the, do the whole thing. I think. I think one of my lessons at one of these days would be, you know, going through the book of Maccabees, um, first, um, one and one to sixty four, right? So, I think I would do that. Honestly speaking, that would be a real good thing to really go into. For you all to see how nice the book really is. It might might be a little gory, but we expect. That's how things are sometimes, right? <laughs> sometimes it's a little gory. Right. And it says, let me read from 40. Right. And it says... Let's turn into okay, good. Uh, no, straight up and straight up, straight, straight to the point. Um, first, first Maccabees chapter four, chapter one and verse forty-one to fifty. Right, it says, and moreover, King Antiochus, who before uh, before we go into a lake, there is get our understanding about King Antiochus, which I have here. Right, it says King, uh, it says Antiochus Epiphanes. Right. Um, well, they say Greek, um, God manifest me. I mean, that's probably definition, but I could really give it up. Anyways, um, also called Antiochus Epimenes, 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 okay, which is the mud, right? 
um, well, the, it gives you the understanding from the birth to the, to the death, right? Which is um, 215 BCE uh, to 164, uh, I guess, the same. Uh, when you go further, it says, Salud king of the Hellenistic Syrian kingdom, who reigned from 175 to 164 BC, right? Uh, as the ruler, he has best known for his encouragement of Greek culture, right? Um, let me get to the Wikipedia to, to give a, a broad understanding um, as well. So, of course, we know he's a Hellenistic king. And let me get that one time. Hellenistic. You realize I suppose Hellenistic and it says Jew, right? I want to give definition. Definition. Right. I'm relating to Greeks. We will look into Greek history, language, or culture. From the death of Alexander the Great um, to the defeat of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Okay. Now I see where they get name from. Anyways. <laughs> By the Octavian, Octavian in um, 31 BC, during the period, Greek culture, right, flourished. Now, I really want, I, I, I already got um, a definition for the Hellenized or Hellen, Hellenized or Hellenistic, well, Hellenized to be exact, well, Hellenistic to Hellenized. But I really want to give, show you all a rough understanding, but you gave me a hard time. But um, a, a, a rough example would be when they go into, and I learned this one from Matasa Bats. This man, a very versed breakdown, I advise you to check him out, right? Very, very versed. I'll read this and I'll go and get the definitions for the um, integrations. Watch this, eh? I want you to pay attention to this. And in those days, when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring, murmuring, sorry, murmuring of Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now watch this, eh? Let me go into that that word Grecian. Tell me what that looked like to you. <laughs> Strong's G, 1675, uh -huh. Helene's Tace. Ah, boy. Helene's Tace. This man doesn't know what he's doing. Trust me. Anyways, Helene Tace, right? Which we know as, as you're seeing here, a Hellenist. And what it says here, one who... <coughs> Slack here. <coughs> Slack here again. A Hellenist, one who imitates the manner and custom or worship of Greek of the Greeks and the use of the Greek tongue. And, and it says in NLT, used in the Jew in the, in, the, in, the, in the New Testament of Jew born in foreign land and speaking Greek. So born in foreign land, which is another land of, because of being scattered. And don't know who they are. So when I go back, this, I mean, this is very easy. From here, I should get a rough understanding, right? The reason why I said it is because when I go back into um, Maccabees now, chapter 4, uh, 1 and verse 41 to, 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 40 to 50, you would see what took place. They discontinued from their heritage. They removed the majority of the Israelites, removed themselves from the custom that they would normally have, which is what God gave them, law, statutes, and commandments, right? And begin to follow after the king. Hence, becoming what? Hell and eyes. And what would happen if they're living in a kingdom and they begin to practice these things and not teaching their children? 
who the who the father is because they are they turn their back and they discontinue from the heritage. Their children will now grow up. They I say it again. Their children will now grow up, not knowing who the father is, unless somebody reveal it unto them. So they will grow up not knowing. You see, you understand where I'm coming from. So let's get into the lesson. <laughs> Let me make sure and um, see we how this do these things. Eh? My book almost done, almost complete. Let's go into the lesson. Maccabees chapter four, chapter one, verse forty-one to fifty, and it says, "And moreover, King Antiochus, who as we know is a Hellenistic king, wicked ass king to be exact, or as they say, mad." Yeah, I agree with that. But that we go and perish anyways. Um, but the king Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people, right? And he says that, and, and everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agree according to the king, the, according to the commandment of the king. You see? So that's, uh, that's a different situation. Heathens agree, right? Now here it is. Yea, many of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So they as well, many of the Israelites also consented or agreed to the um to to, to King King Antiochus. They are already beginning to discontinue from their heritage because we just read that one of the reasons why Yahweh turned his back on us or covered his face from us and was, uh, was um, a little angry with us is because of what? Worshipping idols. Come on, a man. Come on, a man. Come on. Be disobedient. Worshipping idols. Thou shalt not have any other gods before thee. Neither bow down to worship any idols or any, or any images. Roughly paraphrasing, of course. That is Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3 and 4 and 5. Look at check into it. See what I'm talking about. Come on. What do you expect? He will look away to you. He will, he will turn it back on me for a little bit. You, he will say, you go out and handle the stories, my brother. You don't need me. Right? So you go out and handle the stories. And once that thing will happen to you, because guess what? We fall into the hands of the Father. And again, let me get that before we continue on. I'm probably worded wrong, but it's a dread, it says... It's a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living power. So, guess what gonna happen when you fall in, when, when you fall into the hands of, of the Father? You can scatter with tail. You can be under a bunch of curses. What do you expect us? We gonna not even know who we are over a period of time. So much so that we will have to remember ourselves through what hearing the word. You understand what I'm saying? Spirit will call us over a period of time, but guess what? When you read, when I'm going back into the lesson now, for you to see what I'm speaking about. It says, right, for the king had sent a letter by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and, sacrifice and drink offerings. Right in the temple that they should profane the Sabbath, Sabbaths and festival days, and here this part, eh? and pollute the sanctuary and holy people. See the purpose. That is the purpose. Pollute the sanctuary and holy, the sanctuary and holy people. Right, the scriptures made it plain. So when they go into it, it says, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols. Or we're not supposed to be worshipping idols? And idols. And sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beast. Falling away. Because of what? Being disobedient to the Father. People in a situation and lead you away from him. For a short period of time. Make it, make it go through some trials, you know? Go through some trials and tribulation. As you continue. 
um, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Ah, see? So now you have become unclean. Now you are worthy to be called a heathen or a Gentile. Make it worse. Watch this. And, and, to, and, to, end thy, and, and to the end, they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. At whosoever should not do according to the commandments of the king, he said he should die. Oh, so okay, so this right here gives a proper example of us discontinuing from our heritage. We normally, for those who are Israelites, we should not fear death. We already know that death is simply not but a thing. We already know we will return, right? That we will return. It doesn't matter, right? Plus, Pay to pay more technical on the other side of things, because we would receive everlasting salvation, we would still return regardless. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Either we return on this side or return on that side. It is. Let me go and let me continue. When you're going to um continuing, right? Into the second Maccabees because we discontinue from your heritage, right? That and of course all this is the works of the Father, right? Roughly paraphrasing, I do good and I create evil. I how I do all these things, right? Roughly paraphrasing. Yes, multiple precepts to, 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 to give the understanding. Yeah, how I, uh, come on. We get we get total lesson here. So let me, let me continue. It says, I gotta read this coming down and I want to read it into the um matter of fact. Let me get. This was a nice, a nice um piece of information here. Second, yeah, if I really GNT, because I don't have the NLT for it. It says, right, make sure it's GNT. Let me see if this is a proper understanding, a proper thing. Um, I have two or two of them here, so I don't know. Right. All right. So let me go into it. What about let me, let me read the really original translation first. It says, "Not long after the this king, this the king sent an sent um an old man of Athens to compel the Jews, right here it's, to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their power." Or the fathers, and not to live after the laws of the Most High, right? And to pollute all the temples of in Jerusalem, and to call it the temple of Je of Jupiter, um, or Jupiter Olympus, right? And um, and the and that in Jerusalem of Jupiter, the defender of strangers. As they did desire that dwell in the place. And verse 3. The coming of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. And verse 4. The temple, for the temple was filled with riot and, and, and re reveling by the Gentiles. Who, who um, dulled or dealed with halots. Well, if you know what that means, <laughs> and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy place. So well, that already gives a rough understanding of what took place. Um, and besides, and besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. When you go into five, it says, the altars also was filled with profane things which the law forbid it. And going even further, it says, Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days and ancient fast, or to profess himself to be a Jew. And this is why I'm going to take scriptures here, because just to get this point, right? And again, scriptures made it plain, but to make it even more clear, and it says, eh? it says in the, in the GNT, it 
Right? It was impossible to observe the Sabbath and celebrate any of the traditional fe um, festivals or even so much to admit to being a Jew. Oh, so you see? So it reached so much so that we was not even able to, would not have even been able to say, hey, well, I is a Israelite, you know? I is a Jew. Because what would happen if, if you even utter, utter these things? Let me, show you, let me go down. And it says, In that day of the king's birth, of the king's birth, every month they were brought a bitter huh, constraint to eat. I want to know what that is. Anyways, as you go, as you go forward. Um, of the sacrifices and when the... Yeah, I say eat are the sacrifices. Like, exactly. I really want to know what that is. I mean, we already have a rough understanding. Flicking the most unclean of uncleans. I had to say it like that. I can give a damn. I know them pork chop eating. You, 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 you figure it out. <laughs> uh, unclean of uncleans to be exact. And when the when the fast of Bacchus was, was um, kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to back us carrying ivy, right? And here's where it's saying eight. Now, the point is in nine as well. So six and nine is where you get the point, right? But let me read it eight. Moreover, therefore went out a decree. There, there, moreover, there went out a decree, so like here, to the neighbor's cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemon, Ptolemy, so like here, against the Jews. That they should observe the same fashion and to be partakers of their sacrifices. And here's what it says. Like, let me listen to this part properly. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. And going back into the GNT, in 9 it says... And they were told to, to, put, to put to death every Jew who refused to adopt the Greek way of life. It was, it was easy to see that hard times were ahead. So if y'all don't catch that, I will, get, I will reiterate for y'all. In 6 it shows... That we were unable to profess ourselves to be a, a Jew. And nine, it shows that we had to conform ourselves to the man of the Gentiles, or else we'd be unalive. <clears throat> so if we were unable to profess ourselves to be a Jew, what would we then call ourselves in the kingdom of the Greeks? Would not be Greeks? Or Grecians, wouldn't it not be that? Or whatever other um, scattered place that we were, that we would normally have to re 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 call ourselves because we have lost or discontinued from our heritage. We have forgotten. Not even forgotten. We, we were purposefully, we were purposefully prevented to, 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 to identify ourselves and, and as to who we are, to be exact. To not keep the Lord's goals and commandments, to, to, to literally turn away from Him. We were led, to be exact, that we were led to, to do so. So then answer me that, answer me this. We were unable to call ourselves the Jews, so we had to call ourselves Greeks or Gentiles. We were unable to um, keep our customs, statutes and judgments and laws and whatever. So we had to conform to the man of the Gentiles or we'd be, put, be unalive. Then what would we now be? Would we not, would we not now be Hellenized? By the great Hellenistic king of King Antiochus? Who go and flick and get and perish in the end times regardless? Doesn't matter. Wouldn't it not be that? So how could you all even bypass this, these stories? There's the books is there. Take a good read.
take a good read. The truth is there. So when you really get into it, going from there into Galatians chapter 3, <clears throat> What do, you feel, what, what do you feel it's talking about? In many of these instances, when speaking about, um, well, again, straight to the point, there's neither Jews or Greeks. Oh, now, now we get understanding. Now we understand what it's talking about. It's not talking about the Greek heathens. Let that sink in for a minute. Because it's talking about what? The ones who are who are going to be saved through Hamashiach. It's talking about the ones who are, who are carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led, not heathens. Thus the reason Romans 9 and 3 and 4 exist. Because you will have all these precepts going against each other. Acts, Romans, the list goes on. Old Testament, the, the whole Old Testament and even in the New. You will have that whole thing in error if that is the case. And if you want to speak against the three scriptures with one precept or not even a precept or not even to, 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 to clarify this, then you yourself are in error. This is the proof of a study. This is the reason. Let me go into it again. There is neither Jews nor Greeks. There is neither bound nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Hamash Yahweh Hamashiach. And if ye be Hamashiachs, then are ye Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Again, so you see, no problem. So who are giving the promise? Like, let me go. Let, let me let me go into that. And I know I repeated myself for this, but it's very good to do so because you see it plain as day. Again, the scriptures made it plain. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Hamashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. Who are what? Israelites. To whom put in the adoption. And the glory. And the covenant. And the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. When I jump down even further, here it's here it's showing you in 24. And tell me if this does do sound familiar, right? <clears throat> right. Even us Jews, even even us whom had called, who had called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Now listen to this part. This doesn't sound familiar. Let me read further. As he also in OC. I will call them my people. Now I want to make sure and give out. I want to show you all the connection with this. Eh? I don't want it to go over your heads. Watch this. I read it again. And as he said also, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and heir and her beloved, which were not my beloved. Why? We just read it. They've fallen away. They discontinued from their heritage. They started worshipping after other gods, other nasty dumb idols, listening to the customs of, of other people. Heathen nations, to be exact. Let me continue. So it says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be, shall, um, shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. Come on. 
Come on. As he said also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people. And who O.C. is considering Hosea, which we just read. Because when they go into the NLT, concerning the Gentiles, God say in the prophecy of Hosea, those who were not my people, I will now call my people, and I will love thee, love, love those whom I did not love before. And we know the reason for that when they're going back up because what? They departed from him off of worshipping idols. They're falling away. So if he's comparing this to that, the scriptures already made it plain. He's already talk, he's only talking to his peculiar treasure, his holy nation. The children of the living power. He's only talking about those which are the Israelites. Come on, man. Come on. You're ready to study. And as you continue, let you continue. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall also be called, they shall, there they shall also be called the children of the living power. Come on. Come on. Do we not see that? Can I pick this up? Oh, you can't pick it up. Okay. Let me leave it. Do we not see this? Do we not see this? So this is no longer in effect, right? It's in the New Testament. It shows proof. But it's no longer in effect. Come on, man. This is, this is the reason for studying. This is the reason for studying. You all are in error. Much, much, much error. The people who is, the people who is going to be redeemed is people who are under the law. So you're in much, much, much error. I'm going to get that, eh? I'm going to use my own words. I mean, Luke and all make it, make it, make it hard for y'all to, um, to not know, to, to not um, receive, to be exact. But according to scriptures, those who are called, many are called and few are chosen, right? Let me go into it. Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed is Yahweh, power of Israel. Blessed be our power of Israel. For he had visited and redeemed his people. Who is his people? Israel. See, so you see? And when they go for it, it says, and had we and have and have raised up a horn of salvation for us into the house of his servant David. And in the NLT 68 and 69 again, praise Yahweh, our power of Israel, because he <clears throat> has visited and redeemed his people. And here again, 68, I mean 69, you see. Straight, straight to the point, and he has sent us a mighty savior from the royal lineage of his servant David. Oh, I wonder who is that speaking about. Come on, come on, people, like come on. So this nonsense BS about 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 um about um. Other nations, no, no. Only the Israelite would receive the everlasting salvation. Everlasting salvation, right? When even when they're going to Luke chapter 24 and all, which I ventured in the last one, yeah, I ventured in, and they're going to 21. Here it says, just to be on the safe side, but we trust that it had been, right? He which should redeem, which should have redeemed Israel, and besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Now, when you go into that 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 um definition, which dealing with um redeemed, well, you get that one time in the Greek. Strong's G three thousand eighty four, Lutrao, Lutrao, Lutrao. 
or Lutro, Lutro, Lutro. Okay. Release from receipts for ransom, of ransom, to redeem, to liberate, which is to free, to deliver from evil or every kind, internal and external. When they go into this term definition, it's there. The scriptures made it plain. To deliver. To redeem. To liberate. Who? Who? The Israelites. The scriptures made it plain. When you're going to look for, I shall go for first. Anyways, because yeah, how shall I say it, uh, say it himself? Anyways, it is what it is. Like, go look for and go 18. The spirit of Yahweh, of the Most High, which is the spirit of Yahweh, is upon me, right? Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives of an unrecovering is of sight to, to the blind, to set liberty, set at liberty them that are bruised. I want you to watch today. Who you know is at the bottom <coughs> right now as you speak, Salakia. Of society going through these horrendous things by um, browsing through these curses, being called proverbs and barrows everywhere they go. I could go China, I will be known as a nig. A nig, 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 nig. I ain't say the word. I could go in India, I will be known as a nig. I ain't Trinidad, and I'm known as a nig. Not by my own people. I've here I've heard conversations of 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 Elam, which is Indian, and other races speaking um behind closed doors, but you're hearing them speaking against the neg N I G. You know I'm going and say who are oppressed, who were enslaved. That they need to that they need to receive deliverance. And who did Yahweh Shai come for? Again, reiterating this to y'all. Let me not let me, nothing wrong with repeating. Once you get that on, once you gather that knowledge, that is, that is the most important thing. I don't really care. Once the knowledge is gathered, once it's brought out in such a way that you would understand, that is very good for me. Perfect for me. Already by half past an hour. Oh gosh. Um let me, let me close off after this. Shucks. Um Acts chapter 5 and verse 30 and 31. The Most High of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom you slew and hung on a tree. Him had the Most High exalted with his right hand for to give to be a prince and a savior. Prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel forgiveness of sins. So, we are indeed he's coming to, to save the Israelites. And, uh, it's, it's just that simple. We talk about it. There's no, there's no spiritual Israel dealing with the hidden nations and whatnot. There's spiritual Israel dealing with the Gentiles, which are the Israel that fall away. The, Hel the, the Hellenized um, Jews, to be exact. Or the Hellenized Israelites, to be exact. Right? And when they go into um, John chapter 11 and verse 51 and 52. Then you'll also have to answer this question, right? Okay, it's straight to the point because we're gonna close off now. I didn't know I didn't reach that hour already. And this and and this spake he not of himself, right? Being not being high, not being high priest that he, that year, right? He prophesied that Yahweh Shai should die for that nation. Now you see, this is the reason why it's good to check the end check, to, to, um, to really get understanding. And now you can't really rely on NLT all the time. I watch it I'm watching it because here it says it says for that nation, possessive pronoun. Now watch what the NLT says. That's why I doesn't always lean in many of the other videos before you can tell. I just always say that at times you don't have to can't lean on it. Understand where I'm coming from? As you go on, um, it says. 
he did not say he did not say this on his own uh he does say this on his on his own as as high priest at that time he was led to prophesy that Yahweh Hamashiach would die for the entire nation and yes I mean, it, it kind of make it more clear here because we, we know we're dealing with the children of Israel because it still make up as a problem. That entire nation, meaning the entire nation of Israel. Because when you go down into the 52, it says, and not for that nation only, but, but that also he should gather together in one the children of the Most High that were scattered. Uh, and know who he chose of the most high? Exodus 19 and 5 and 6. Come on, oh, on. Oh. It's dealing with the children of Israel. I'm very sorry. Other nations was never mentioned as the children of the most high. I'm very sorry. Only the children of Israel was mentioned as the children of the, of, of the most high. I'm very sorry again. Sorry, not sorry. It is what it is. So, you all have to answer that question. Because we know, I already went through it, who was scattered. Who was the people that were scattered for the disobedience? Who were under the law, which Christ came to, which Christ, um, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, comes or came to redeem. That we would receive the everlasting salvation. That's why when you go into John chapter 3 and verse 16. And again, we already did this before, but Job, yes. Pfft, John chapter 3, I'm sleeping by. 3 and verse 16, it, scriptures made it plain. Like read. It says... For God so loved the world, or the Most High so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now we already break down that part because when they go into the context of the story, they with Moses, they started serpent in the wilderness. When they go into Numbers, um, it gives you a proper understanding um, as to <clears throat> and what they did for um, for their disobedience or for their blasphemy, or let's say for for speaking against the Most High and Moses, they were they were um, poisoned with with serpents or and alive by serpents. And the a few of them asked uh, Moses to speak to Yahweh that, that these things would stop. And he told Moses to make a brass serpent of brass and raise it up. And as he wants to raise it up, who had faith in, in the, that, that they would be saved, and faith in Yahweh's words that they would be saved, that and they were indeed. Same way as we as the children of Israel, because it's referring to the children of Israel. When they go into the cross reference, it's referring to the children of Israel directly. So when I go back into it and I go into um um even so much the son of man be lifted up, he's talking about Yahweh Shah Masha, the son of the living power, the begotten son. Be lifted up the same way with faith and praises. We are to praise his holy name. We are to lift, we are to have faith, we are to believe in him. That's why it says, For God, for the most high soul of the world, or Yahweh soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten Son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth in him. Now, when you go into Isaiah, which is a precept, it's because you're going precept upon precept. Watch this. Tell me how, tell me if this doesn't, um, add, if this doesn't align directly. The other thing is, um, Isaiah made it more clear. Because we had to break down the, 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 the um, Precepts um, line line upon line to get the understanding, and this one just made it straight straight up, right? I say, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall be not ashamed nor confounded, world without end. Oh, so Israel is referred to the world without end. When I go back into John again, world without end. Israel is referred to the world without end. Keep that in mind. Refer to the world without end. I say it again. Israel is referred to the world without end. When they go back to 16, for the most high soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. World without end. Make this just show you that again. It's a precept, precept upon precept, old and new. Many of these precepts are, 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 are um, how to put it, are rewritten, and be and uh, concerning the um the prophets or the disciples. 
When you go to Romans, just to give an example, I'll share just now, give an example just now. You understand? I have a lasting salvation. So the people are going to receive that lasting salvation as who? The Israelites. When they go into Malachi 1 and, and I'll just give you an example. I've loved you, said Yahweh, which is referring to Jacob, right? And I hated Esau, right? Now watch this. Just to just to keep y'all in order and understanding that uh, son, so y'all could see that mean mean are no BS. Here it says here. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. As it is written. These come on. Come on. He just said it stated over because as it was has already been written, because they all go in one accord. The prophets and teachers that, that are under the one hundred percent truth all speak in one accord. They don't they don't speak against themselves or against the scriptures. Like many of these religions, all religions speak against the scriptures because they fall in error one way or the next. Anyways, so I hope this was edifying, right? I probably go a little bit extra, but really and true is to, to give understanding of the Gentiles. Now we see what Gentiles mean, right? Of he, of non-Hebrew, of the descent of Abraham, of Israel. Three points. Well, dealing with two, which is of the hidden nation or the Asia that was scattered. And we demonstrated that in multiple um, parts of the book, even in the Apocrypha. Old, new Apocrypha. I hope this was edifying. Again, now I, uh, I, is not, I am not these very first brothers which I'm going to make a video for to show because they are very, very, very first in their, in their crafts, in the way that they do things. I know I just learning. I learned and I, just, I had to bring this up because come on. Come on, man. Like, anyways. So again, we give our praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Kalala Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Kakadash. Again, double honesty, apostles and prophets and elders, and like minded brothers, because the like minded truth. To y'all, Shalom, and to Wada for the lessons that y'all have been given, bringing out to edify the sheep. And it, it is indeed edifying. I see Matas about doing them um, lives daily. Um, I'll say daily, almost daily now, which is very good. And I, I go ahead and make a video for him, for y'all to see to, to reveal um for those who uh don't know to kind of bring y'all to him as well and to and to Abunaya, and to, I guess uh, one or two of the elders but I consider them my elders so it is what it is they are indeed very versed in his truth they they study daily they go through the historical facts and I am I I can't be I can't be like them I mean I'm not as good as them but at the end of the day everybody fall in their lots once they bring out the truth. With sincerity and with diligence and not leaning not leaning onto your own understanding, not trimming it, trimming your way to seek um love or fame or whatever for anybody else. You know I'm coming from? None of that nonsense. Cold hard truth. Cold hard truth. That is why I stand. It is what it is. So Jalwam.